Hello everyone, my name is Jay Ball. I'm the product manager with Solid Milling from Seco Tools. There's a strategy that's become really popular in the last three to five years for helping reduce tooling costs and increasing productivity, and it's called optimized roughing or high-speed side milling or tricota milling. This all got its start about 10 to 15 years ago in the mold and dye industry for customers that were looking for a good, efficient way to hard mill slots, gates, and runners in mold cavities. Fast forward, within the last three to five years, there's been a lot of advancements in this type of strategy when it comes to programming, tools, and holders. So what we found is that there's six essential tips to being efficient when it comes to optimized roughing. So today I'm going to talk about those specific tips and tricks to make you more efficient when you're looking at using optimized roughing in your manufacturing processes. So one of the essential tips and tricks when you're looking at getting into optimized roughing or employing optimized roughing into your manufacturing processes is understanding that tools have a limitation as far as what step over you can take with those. So for example, if you're going to use a multi-flute tool such as a five-flute end mill, you've got a lot of chip spacing in that tool compared to a six, seven, or nine flute. So typically what we see with five fluid end mills is you can take roughly about a 15, 25, 30, even 40% radial step over when you're optimized roughing. If you're looking at using a six flute tool, your radial step over actually has to be less because you've got less chip spacing. So typically you're gonna run between eight, 10, and maybe even a 12% radial step over when you're using a six flute. If you jump forward and use a seven or nine flute, you've got even less chip spacing when it comes to utilizing those tools. So again, those step overs might only be in the five to 6% range. So just be really mindful and understand that the amount of flutes you have, yes, will increase your feed rates, but as the number of flutes increases, the step over has to decrease as well. One of the things that you really need to consider when you're looking at getting to optimized roughing is the type of holders that, can, that you're going to incorporate in these types of strategies. So in front of me, we've got the six most common holders that we see in the manufacturing environment. It's going to be shrink fit, side lock, ER collet chucks, hydraulic holders, milling chucks, just to name a few. But the big important thing to remember is you've got to have a minimal run out. Anything more than four tenths is going to typically cut your tool life in half. So make sure that you're using a good, rigid, good, solid shrink fit holder, milling chuck, a hydraulic holder. Also make sure that you keep those holders nice and clean because even the smallest chips can make those holders run out, which is going to have a big impact in your tool life. So when you're looking at incorporating optimized roughing into your machining process, something that has to be taken into consideration is the type of machine tool that you're going to be applying these types of tools and these types of programming strategies. Older antiquated machines might not have the look ahead or the feed capabilities to utilize these tools in the right manner. But if you look at a newer machining center that has a good look ahead that has higher feed rates, that machine tool is actually gonna be a little bit better suited for these types of advanced strategies. So just be really mindful about what type of machining center you're gonna try to utilize when you're looking at incorporating these strategies. So with these advanced strategies, it's nearly impossible to write them by hand. There's thousands and thousands of lines of code. There's thousands of different movements in X and Y locations. So having a good, strong, robust CAM software package is really going to help make you as efficient as possible. There's hundreds of different softwares out there nowadays. It seems like everybody has some sort of optimized roughing strategy or programming tool path. So just really make sure that you can find a CAM software program that works for you and really start to understand it and utilize it for these types of machining processes. So where optimized roughing becomes really effective is when you take large depth of cuts. Typically 2D, straight walled or prismatic parts that don't have a lot of 3D contours are gonna be best suited for optimized roughing strategies. If you have a complex 3D surface, such as a mold cavity or an aerospace component where there's a lot of different contours, a lot of different changes in Z level, you might wanna look at high feed roughing. But if you do have those straight prismatic walled parts, you wanna look at trying to take at least two times the diameter depth of cut sometimes even three times diameter depth of cut, just depending on the tool. But that's where you're really going to see optimized roughing really help reduce cycle times is when you take that full either flute length or the two times the depth of cut that's available on the tool. So along this journey with optimized roughing, we've learned that there's certain cutting data that needs to be applied with these strategies if you're utilizing, say, a six, seven, or nine flute tool. So what we've done is we've actually figured out exactly what speeds and feeds you need to run these tools at, whether it be for steel, stainless steel, titanium, inconels, in the back of the brochure, and also in the solid milling app. We've taken all the guesswork out by already giving you that type of information. It's a really good place to start. Obviously, depending on your application, depending on the machine tool, you might have to optimize uh, from there, maybe dial the parameters in a little bit. But if you're new to optimized roughing, you want to know where to get your starting data, look at the resources that have already been developed. 
So these are the six most essential tips and tricks for optimized roughing. If you're a seasoned veteran or you're getting into optimized roughing for the first time, we feel that these are gonna help you be more efficient and more productive. So if you are interested in getting into optimized roughing, incorporating some of these strategies, please reach out to your local SQL sales professional. We'd love to come in and help work with you guys and improve your processes. Thanks.